Hi everyone, my name is Justin Staub. Welcome back to the Deca Goat YouTube channel, where if you try hard enough, you can become the next Deca Goat. Today, I'm excited to kick off our interview series with a good friend, Sarah Armstrong. Sarah is an experienced Deca judge, a mom to a fourth place finisher in ICDC, and a lifeline to my local chapter. Sarah, welcome, and thank you for doing this with us today. And let's jump right in. What do you see, Sarah, as the value of the Deca experience? Oh, Justin, thank you. It's nice to be here and uh, good luck to all the students out there competing. Um, I, I think DECA is a fantastic organization. I am very impressed at the district, state and international level at the talent of these young people. I think DECA is probably the best opportunity to get some firsthand experience into the business world and to learn some skills that are truly going to help you in the workplace, communication skills, analytical skills that aren't always tested in the classroom, but clearly are tested in the competitions and will really prepare you for life after college even. Being a mom and with my son is, Decker also provides incredible leadership opportunities for these young people to serve as officers in their own club, in state organizations, and even in the national level. Sarah, in your several years of judging, you've seen hundreds of different role plays. What are some aspects of the role play that really make it stand out to you as a judge? So what stands out to me as a judge? As most of you know, the judges, there's a lot of students coming one right after another. It's a long day for judges. Judges come with a variety of different backgrounds and experience. So what makes someone stand out in this group? So to me, the first thing I think is important is understand your role via via the judge. For example, you know, sometimes you are a superior. Most of the time you're a, a subordinate to the judge. The judge is the director of marketing. You're the, you know, a marketing on a product per se. Or sometimes you're the judge is the employee and you're the boss. So you have to really understand that role because students that don't read the role play start off, you can't recover if you don't start the role in the right organization. So that would be my first, you know, my first piece of that. Um, What's important to me when you're seeing a variety of students is to come in enthusiastically and present your conclusion, have a conclusion and present it right up front. Yes. That gives the judge an opportunity to then follow your analysis and understand where you're going rather than kind of wondering what you're going to do. So again, I would start with a brief summary of the issues so they know that you understand what the issue is and your conclusion briefly. And then what you do next is you really provide the support and the analysis of that conclusion. And this is where the meat of the, the role play goes, but I would say um, you can, you can I don't want to make up facts, but you want to support your conclusion. Not all the facts, you don't want to certainly facts that are conflict in conflict with the role play, but you want to add information, focus reports, different yeah. research you've done that support your conclusions that you want to do. A lot of times students talk about in marketing role plays about Maslow's hierarchy and what the needs are. It's like, that that impresses me as a, as a judge because, wow, this kid really knows his field. Know if you're in the automotive area, understand more about cars, give the judge some background to the market that you know about. It just shows that you're really engaged in that role play. So to me, that's the support part is taking your conclusion and really putting the facts and the analysis on it. And the final point, and which I think is probably the most important point to stand out in a role play, is to be creative. creative. If you look, that's one of the 21st century skills. However, a lot, a lot of students don't get, a lot of my role plays, even the top ones, are only getting fours in creative creativity because they do a great job. They brought, they didn't bring anything new to the table. But by being creative, they've also become passionate and memorable. And things to be creative are about, you know, you have a new product you're bringing to market, come up with a really good name for it. Come up with a logo or a slogan. That's really pretty cool. Um, or a way to market something. Um, in a recent role play, it was a, they were they were um, market, branding a new car. And someone said, well, you know, we'll use social media and we'll release it at the Super Bowl. You know, this is like great ideas, I think, that are showing some creativity and some ingenuity and some knowledge of the market. So to me, that's points that are usually left on the table. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Justin, the other thing I would add is there's no one answer that's correct. I mean, a judge will read the role play and they might be thinking a certain way, but I know I've been really impressed by kids taking a different path than I was thinking on as long as they supported it really well. Um, for example, I was doing one role play where it was the decision whether or not to build a, another car wash. And this one student decided that he would build it for farm equipment. <laughs> and, and my first reaction was, say what yeah. you know it was just really odd because I, I was thinking of 
He did a fabulous job. He was my top scorer. He had so much great information for it. It was terrific. And again, something I had never anticipated, but really, really impressed with his analysis. Sarah, thanks for all those great suggestions. Since you've seen so many role plays, you've probably seen students make the same mistakes over and over again. What are some common mistakes that students make in their deck of role plays that are really pretty easy to fix? I think the most common mistake kids make is failure to state their plan, their position and their plan up front, identify the issue, and, and that will help ground them too. It's not just helping to ground the judge, but you, you, know, you realize you're taking a judge who hasn't read the role play before today either, might be hearing it 27 times, but you want to be able to make sure that you, the judge is engaged with you and following you completely. And like I said, it, it may be a very different path than the judge was thinking, but if they know where you're going, I just set, think setting that stage is the most important thing and so easy to do, especially when you're a little nervous. Sarah, since you've judged at all different DECA levels, what makes the ICDC com- competitor different than the district or the state level competitor? Well, everybody is very well prepared at ICDC. You don't always see that at the state district's level. At the district level, some kids, it's their first time, they're in ninth grade. Whereas at ICDC, kids, even if they're in ninth grade, they're 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 very talented, they're, they're, they know what they're doing. So the judges, there's a lot more students you judge. Judges come from all kinds of backgrounds. When I was at ICDC, I was doing the quick service um, food restaurant category, and they actually had baristas from Star- Starbucks there with their uniforms because they needed people. And you know, so you can't always assume that you're judged at any level, but even at nationals where they require so many judges, you can't always assume that they're going to be experts or professional in the marketing world that you were discussing. So I think you need to be, again, you need to understand your role. You need to lead your judge. You need to have, have them understand things. Like I mentioned before, the four Ps, most judges will never have heard of that, but they'll be impressed if you can use that in your analysis effectively. So I think at ICDC, you're in a much tougher competition. I would tell every student, strike hot hard on that test because the, the scores are tight at ICDC because everyone is pretty prepared. Mm-hmm. So try to get as many points on the test. Well, I just think, I'm, I think you want to come in, you want to engage the judge, especially in a video situation. And you want to do it professionally um, with enthusiasm, but not too much enthusiasm. You don't want to come across kind of superficial. So I think just come in, be yourself, you know, be well prepared. Um, Remember, you're teaching the judge, you're, you're walking them through your analysis, even though they may be your superior in the role play, you don't want to be condescending, obviously, but you want to walk someone through, you're, you really need to win them on your argument, on your plan, you know, there's no right or wrong plan, but you just need to be convincing and use the support. Again, use your tools that you've learned studying for the exams, like put some of that stuff in. The judges may not have heard of them, but they will be very impressed that you, you use some conventions and some, some tools to analyze the situation. And, and also knowing more about the market you're in and providing some information, even though some of it is just, I wanna say made up, but you know you provide some, some valid information, it shows the judge that you're truly interested and in, invested in, in business and learning more and doing a good job. All right, Sarah, last question. Since we're competing virtually this year, do you have any tips specific to just competing in this virtual environment? Role plays typically are not presentations. I mean, they're interactive almost immediately. So I really give it to the kids to be able to kind of do this simulation without any of that feedback. So what I would say to them is be confident, be comfortable, but don't get too cheeky. (laughs) A couple of kids kind of get cheeky because they're in this kind of and I think I think that's not going to go over so well on the on the camera. Um, so I think you know people should dress and be very professional. I would watch a little bit even more what you wear. I had one young man with a bright red bow tie. You know, it just it just was a little bright for the environment. You know, um, I, you know some people talk with their hands, try to sit on right. their hands. I, that was a little distracting. Or if you have you know, jewelry that's dangling, you know, because again, the, the judge has nothing else to do but to watch the screen. So you want to make it as kind of non-distracting as possible. It's harder when you're kind of talking to yourself, but try to avoid the ums and the, you know, because they're just more visible on screen as opposed to a live conversation that they just get forgotten. So I would, and I will also say myself as a judge, I rewatched a lot of the videos which really helped me. Oh, did they hit the performance standards? What did they do? 
And it, it took longer to judge, but I appreciated that extra time. And then I could give much better comments. But to the extent the judges are rewatching, you know, they will see things that they're distracting or something. The other thing I would say is watch your backgrounds a little bit. I mean, we are all doing these <laughs> videos, conferences in different areas and all, but if it is, and, you know, I think the judges appreciate that. But if you're in your bedroom, which a lot of the students were, makes sense. You know, make sure that your socks aren't hanging out of your dresser drawer. Um, just a couple minutes to tidy up behind you, I think. Just, again, it's just something by watching the film, the judge can start focusing on other things. So you just want it to, we want the environment to be neutral. You really want the focus to be on what you're saying and, you know, you're identifying the issue and providing a recommendation. Sarah, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for your top secret tips from a DECA judge. YouTubers, if you've liked this video, hit the like button. And if you aren't already done, so hit the subscribe button so you see our content as it comes out. Sarah, thank you very much.